Hope you have your Bibles. If you do, I'm going to ask you to take those out to the book of James and turn to the third chapter. We've made it to the midpoint in the book of James. But as you're doing that, there's a story that's going around in, in Washington State, a true story about some, some junior high girls, um, 12 to 14 year olds. They've discovered lipstick, and that's not really that big a deal, I guess. They've been putting that lipstick on in the school bathroom. That's not really the problem either. What's the problem is that after they've put on their lipstick, they're kissing the mirror. And so they're leaving lots of little lip prints all over the mirror of the school. Well, one of the teachers heard about this, and so she took the girls aside, and she tried to explain to them, look, you're really being inconsiderate. Somebody's got to clean up after you. I wish you'd stop doing that. But the teacher's words They went to no avail. The girls continued going to the bathroom and putting on their lipstick and kissing the mirror. So it finally got to the principal, and the principal did the same thing. She took the girls into the bathroom. This time she thought she might impose on them. Don't you realize this is costing us money, money that should be, could, could be spent elsewhere. Somebody's got to go to the work. We've got to pay them to get this lipstick off. And she thought maybe that would, would solve the problem. And yet it still didn't work. The girls kept kissing the mirror. Finally, the janitor said, could I have a stab at this? And they thought, Sure, but I don't know what you're going to do. And so anyway, the janitor, accompanied by the teacher and the principal, they went into the bathroom, and he simply said, you know, every morning I've got to come in and I've got to clean off the lipstick off the mirror. And I just want to show you how I do that. And so he took out his long-handled squeegee, and he took it, and he dumped it in the toilet, and he cleaned off the mirror. (laughs) Problem solved. It's interesting that you can tell people facts, but sometimes facts don't go through. Sometimes it takes a little bit more to turn facts into um, to wisdom. And we know people, they know a lot of facts, but they're still not very smart. And uh, James is going to tell us what true wisdom is. In fact, more than that, he's once again going to set up a contrast for us. And the contrast here is going to be between human wisdom and godly wisdom, and there is a big difference. And so he wants to give us this sharp contrast between the wisdom of man and the wisdom of God. And that's where we find ourselves in the book of James. James chapter 3, beginning with the 13th verse, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you'll find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. He really does set up a contrast here between earthly wisdom and heavenly wisdom. It's interesting because we live in a world that probably there are many who claim to be wise, but the way the world measures wisdom is much different from how God measures wisdom. If we think about worldly wisdom, we often think people are wise if they have a lot of money or if they are intelligent on on the IQ scale or talented or prominent. But I've got to tell you, I've known people that have had very high IQs But when it comes to street smart, they weren't very wise. I know people who can name off the the periodic table or tell you quantum theory, but they really can't boil water. And you probably know people like that. Or I've known people who they were rather wealthy, and yet the truth of the matter is they didn't have a lot of wisdom. Uh, Thinking in yesteryear, I wouldn't want to pattern my life after Howard Hughes, or I wouldn't want to take marriage advice from Donald Trump both very wealthy people, but really maybe in those areas of life, not very wise. It's interesting what we do in the world. If somebody is proficient or capable in one area, we often want to give them a sounding board in another area. For example, we can take actors and just because they're a good actor, really, does that give them the right to speak on politics or because they're a good athlete, do you really want them to speak up on behalf of America? You see, a lot of times we grant wisdom to people that maybe we really shouldn't grant wisdom to. Just because they're talented or prominent doesn't mean they're going to speak for us. And just because they might be successful does not mean they're truly wise. James is going to remind us we need to be careful who we're taking our cues from. Do you really want to take your cues from a worldly perspective? And in this passage, he's going to outline for us the difference. 
And the first thing we need to remember is what he does right here in this passage. He's going to contrast human wisdom with true wisdom. And he's going to tell us true wisdom has a different source. Has a different source. And I want you to notice what he says. Verse 14, verse 15, jump down to verse 17 about true wisdom. If you're If you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual of the devil. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all, pure and then peace loving. And then he gives us a list of maybe what we need to call the fruit of wisdom. And he's going to tell us what true wisdom looks like. But he starts by showing us, (coughs) excuse me, he starts by showing us where true wisdom comes from. And the wisdom we've got to strive for is not the wisdom of the world. Our thinking should not be influenced by popular opinion or trends or the current fad. Our wisdom, true wisdom, comes from God. In fact, we're going to read in scripture things like, it's the fool that says in his heart there's no God. But if we devoid ourselves from godly wisdom, we are fools. And we need to understand that we need not be influenced by the world around us. In fact, more than that, we must not be influenced by the world around us. True wisdom comes from God. And I just think about that for a moment. If that's true, and it is, that true wisdom comes from God, maybe we need to stop and think, who are we listening to? Who really gets our attention? Are you really wise if you're following not God's word, but the ways of the world. And James is going to tell us, no, true wisdom comes from God. He's been trying to teach us to this, this already. We go back, clear back to chapter one. And he's told us if any, of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. But when he asks, you must believe and not doubt. True wisdom comes from God. In fact, I want you to notice what he describes human wisdom as. True wisdom, it comes from God. He's the source. And if you lack it, you do. Ask God. But notice what he tells us about humanistic wisdom. And he uses three words. They're rather interesting. And they really, they really build on each other. Or maybe I should, they get progressively worse. He says, here's what human wisdom is like. First of all, it is worldly. Literally the word there, it's earth bound. That's its source. And then he uses a rather rare word. It's only used four other times in scripture, which is much harsher. It is unspiritual. And so it's not only just worldly, it's unspiritual. And then he uses a word it might surprise you to find out. It's the only place in scripture, not just the only place in scripture. It's the only place in Greek literature that this particular word is used. It's literally the word demonic. Now there are other words translated of the devil or demonic, but this one is a very strong word here. And he says, look, it's not only when you're listening to the, the cues, taking your cues from the world around you, it's not only earthly and unspiritual. It's of the devil. And so he contrasts these two types of wisdom. Look, you're listening to God and are therefore truly wise, or you're listening to the world and that is unspiritual. It's worldly. It's demonic. And he's telling us, make sure we know where we're listening. Who are you taking your cues from? I like what the apostle Paul says in Colossians. He tells us to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. Again, watch out who you're listening to and what you're giving your attention to. And maybe we need to stop and say, really, when we're giving bits of advice to people, who are we quoting? Are you really listening more to Oprah or to Dr. Phil? Or are you really listening to what the word of God says? When you're responding about, here's what true morality is, here's what the Christian life is, who are you listening to And James reminds us that true wisdom has its source in God. And so make sure you're either listening to God or you're a fool. Because true wisdom comes from God. Well, not only does he tell us the source of true wisdom, he's going to go on and he's going to describe the characteristics of one who really is wise. True wisdom has different characteristics. And it's interesting, the the results it has in a person's life. He's going to give us a contrast between worldly self-indulgence and Christian service. And we need to realize that really they're quite different. A person who's worldly wise or wise in the eyes of the world, he might tell you things. And a lot of times that person's going to be boastful and arrogant and say, look, I'm smarter than you are. A lot of times a person's going to use that for his own benefit. They're going to be proudful and boastful and arrogant. They don't listen. You can't tell them what to do. You see, that's worldly wisdom. And he's going to contrast that with what True wisdom is like. And I want you to notice what James says as we get down to verse 14 again and following. 
But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you'll find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure and peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And again, I've told you before, it almost sounds like this fruit of the spirit list, except it's the wisdom, fruit of wisdom. Here's what true wisdom produces in your life. And he gives us these descriptions. And I've got to tell you, this particular section of the book of James is masterfully written. It's masterfully written because, first of all, he uses alliteration, words that all start with the same letter. But more than that, he builds on that, and the words all sound the same. And so when you're quoting this passage in Greek, it flows off the tongue, beautifully building one on top of the other, both the negative characteristics and the positive characteristics. Let me just give you an example of that here with the positive characteristics. Notice how the Greek words there, if we were saying in English, they all start with the letter E, and then he moves to the letter A, and they build on each other. And when you say them in Greek, they just kind of flow off one from another. It's masterfully written. But more than that, it really describes the true nature of things. You see, here's what happens oftentimes when a person is wise in the world. They become arrogant and boastful and proud. Uh, they really are demanding. They, they don't listen to other people. They say, here, you've got to listen to me because I'm smarter than you are. And he contrasts the ways of the worldly wisdom and people who have it who are arrogant. And he says, actually, godly wisdom is not like that at all. In fact, understand godly wisdom has a very, very different look. And I want to spend some time. We see those negative characteristics, bitter envy and selfish ambition, boastful. They deny the truth. The three words we looked at, earthly, unspiritual, from the devil. Those are the humanistic characteristics. But he says, here's how you recognize godly wisdom. And notice these words. They're pure. He uses the word peaceable, literally this is a striving for peace. It's, it's not peace at all cost. I mean, truth divides, but is striving for peace. Consider it. And literally the word here is considering the thoughts of other people. The word willing to yield, weighing the facts. And notice, here's a person that's going to take a stand for the truth, but they're going to try to find areas of agreement. They're going to listen carefully to other people. They're going to weigh the facts. They're going to determine the strength of the opponent's argument. And then they're going to be considerate about that. And they're going to try to find peace and resolution. They're merciful. In their life, they bear good fruit. They're impartial. It's a word we've seen before in the book of James. They're single-minded. They've got focus on who God is and what he's done for us. And they're sincere. And notice the contrast between arrogant and boastful and proud. And the one who's, who's humble. The one who's open-minded. The one who's tolerant, willing to weigh the facts, who's considerate, and yet takes a stand single-mindedly on the truth of God. And he actually tells us, you can tell the difference between human wisdom and godly wisdom. In fact, it ties right in with what we've learned already in the book of James. When he's talking about willing to weigh the facts and listen to others, we've read in the book of James, be quick to listen and slow to speak. You see, that's true wisdom. And he tells us here that here's what godly wisdom looks like. Notice he's told us where the source of true wisdom is. It's from God. And also what the characteristics of true wisdom are in our life. In fact, I've got to tell you, you can tell a person's wisdom by their character. Now, I want you to notice the verse that started this in, in verse 13. Notice what James says in chapter 3, verse 13. Who's wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. You see, wisdom isn't our goal. Wisdom actually is supposed to produce something in our 